Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Belgrade Online, an online ministry of Belgrade Avenue United Methodist Church. Welcome to Belgrade Online. I'm Dan, the video editor of Belgrade Online. It's a new year, and once again, Belgrade Online will be making some changes. Our world is ever-changing, and we want to keep things fresh here at Belgrade Online. So be watching for some changes in the coming weeks. And now, without further ado, here are this week's announcements, followed by Dan's sermon and some music to brighten your day. Thanks again for watching Belgrade Online. to recognize some of the people that have been involved in music throughout the year. Okay. And if you would please stand when your name is called. And remain standing. Yes. Um, for choir, we've got Jan Obama, Marsha Ballfans, Della Lewing, Carrie Middlecamp, Carolyn Klaus, and any of the choir members. And Mackenzie, who played the <laughs> piano for us. <laughs> For bells, we have Deb Anderson, and any of those that bell ring. For organ, piano, and vocals, we've got Shaylin Sal Salgado, Della Lewing, Mackenzie Lee, Scott Allen, Morgan Anderson, Beth Crandall. For Sunday school, we have Kent and Wendy Calm. And I'm going to do an aside here. Kent kept the Sunday school program going. It would have evaporated. And a church cannot grow without children being nurtured in the faith. And he saw that and decided nobody else was going to do it. I will do it. He put in hours and hours and hours. And it was hard. And he did it for the church. Kent and Wendy Cohn, Alinda Soma, Miriam Feist, Don Madsen, Pat Keel, Jill Gates, and myself. Um, for Bible studies, we have Kent and Wendy Calm, Della Lewing played piano, Kathy Rigdon. Worship helpers, Barb Michaels, Ken Lewing, Cindy and Scott Morrison, Nyleen Simpson, De Denise Abrahamson, Kelly Nance, Don Madsen, Wendy Calm, Steve Johnson, Joanne Stewing, Chantelle Royer, Lori and David Scott, Miriam Matson, and Nancy Reed. And for script, Robin and Susan Schwager, myself, Sandy, and Jill. Uh, visitation, Sandy Rasky, and Ron and Lois Smoke, and Barb Michaels. Um, the community garden, Greg Anderson, thanks for the plants every year. <laughs> Scott Morrison for tilling the, the soil, myself, and Sandy and Jill for tending to it throughout the summer months. For United Women in Faith, we have Deb Anderson and Wendy Calm. 
on staff here, we have excellent people, Shelley Storm, Jeff Jensen, and Dan Crandall. For trustees and maintenance, Dave Blum, Bruce Burnett, Ron Smoke, and Bill Telejohn. SPPRC, Linda Johnson, and she is also the Ad Council recorder, and she's also treasurer of United Women in Faith. For the outreach team, myself, and if and Susan Schwieger does our minutes, but if you're on the outreach team, could you please stand? That is an awesome, awesome team of very dedicated people. Sound and creative production, we have Dan Zimmerly, mm -hmm. Dan Crandall, Sergio Salgado, Sean Tweeten, and Kent Calm. Prayer team, if you're on the prayer team, please stand. We meet Mondays um, through throughout the year and for many years. Lois Smoke has been our very faithful recorder um, and she moves the meetings along. <laughs> uh, flowers and landscaping, Ron and Lois. Money count counters, Kent Calm and Todd Kenward. The, our treasurer, Jody Zimmerly. Our historian, Kelly Jo Nelson. Second Harvest, is really spearheaded by Kent and Wendy Calm and Todd Kenward. Um, if you attend church here, that is a vital part of what goes on. So if you have attended church, please stand. <laughs> and also, if you give us financial support, um, that is critical for everything we do. So we thank you for that. As you see, it takes all of us to make this happen. And I am so proud to be a member of this family. When asked what the greatest commandment is, Jesus answered with two. You must love the Lord your God, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. United Methodists around the world are active in our local churches and communities, and through global connection of congregations and agencies, we participate in ministries thousands of miles from where we live. Following Jesus' call, founder of the early Methodist movement, John Wesley, taught us to grow in our faith. And as you see with everybody standing, we know that we are following these special words. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. And thank you for your continuing response with compassion, involvement, support, and love. This church is living because of all of us together. a stranger and you invited me in I was sick and you looked after me I needed a teacher and you inspired me I was lost and you prayed for me I was addicted, and you helped me break free. I needed a mentor, and you were there for me. I felt alone, and you showed me true community. You helped me experience the joy of worship. You made me feel welcome and safe. You gave me the strength to keep going. You led me to Jesus.
this, this summer, I've been starting to announce this this summer, we are doing a, a joint vacation Bible school for kids. Um, we're going to be joining with Crossview Covenant Church, and we're going to be doing from August 7th to 10th, we're going to be doing VBS with them. It's a Monday through a Thursday, and it'll be in the mornings from 9 to 11.30 a.m. We are looking for some volunteers to, to help out because we're going to do it together. I'm hoping to send uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 volunteers if we can get a few people to help out. And here's what they need. We're looking for people to basically just hang out with the kids is one thing you could do. Be a group leader. A group leader isn't somebody you don't have to teach. You don't have to lead anything. You just got to be there and, and build relationships and get to know the kids in your group. And you'll be with that group all week. And you'll be having the schedule and just bringing your kids to the different stations and the scheduled activities that week. The second thing is that you could sign up to be a teacher because each station will have their own teachers and or uh, activity uh, leader for that activity. And they're looking for people to teach lessons and people to do uh, crafts and uh, that's uh, things like that. And then they're also looking for people to maybe help decorate or maybe people to help set up. They'll be setting up for, for that after church at Crossview on Aug Sunday, August 6th. So they need help with that. But then also, if you if you uh, like to cook or like to bake. They need help baking goodies and treats for kids for their treat time. That's something you could do. And that wouldn't require being there that week for the whole time, but that's one thing. And so there's uh, lots of different ways you can volunteer. So I encourage you to think about it and, and let us know. Let me know. You can shoot me a text message. You can email me, email the office. Let us know. Strongly consider helping out that week. It'll be a, a really fun time. Pastor Brad Jackson at Crossview and myself, we've got some fun things in the works that we're going to be doing. And, and, you know, kids love making fun of the pastors. So we're going to have a good time. We're going we're gonna to give them that, give them the fun there. So August 7th to 10th, joint VBS. We encourage you to help out with that. Next kind of fun thing that we got, I want to start announcing it now, is that in it's just about halfway through 2023 here, coming up in a, in a little over a month. And it's it's been a few years since we've done a church directory for Belgrade. So we're going to do a new 2023 church directory this year. What's going to happen is that somebody from the company that bought out LifeTouch is going to be coming out and taking pictures in September. They'll come out and they'll take pictures and everyone's going to get a free directory. And then if you want to purchase the pictures that they take from there, that you can definitely do that as well through, through them. Oh, and a free 8x10. That's coming up in September and I'll have solidified dates for you coming up. But um, I just wanted to, to kind of put the bug in your ear and, and in September we'll be starting to, uh, starting to take photos for, for our 2023 church directory. And my hope is to have that out to you so everybody has the directory kind of somewhere between Thanksgiving and before Christmas. So kind of a, you know, early, early bill grade Christmas gift, I guess. And my goal this year also, my second goal is that, you know, in the past, the directories have had some blank pictures where there's no picture there. There's family information, but no picture. I, I would love to have a picture in every single slot for every single family. And when the time comes uh, to get the pictures taken, they'll, ha they'll have a photographer out here for three or four days. They can also come out further than that. But if you can't make the time slots when we do post them, we can also, I can also come out and take your photo as well. And so, or you can come in at a different time and we can do that and submit photos also. But that's going to be coming up in September. And now the other thing, the last thing I've got to announce is in uh, the beginning of July, we've got fun days coming up. And so we're looking for about 10, 10, to, 10 to 20 volunteers in fun days. And there's two ways we can volunteer. One thing is the, is the fun days parade in general is looking for people to help kind of be an extra set of eyes and, and pass out candy if there's a, a lag in, in floats in our area here. So that's one thing. Um, and we'll have a bit more information about that. Then the other thing is that we'd love to do our, our hot dog stand, a uh, hot dog chip soda stand, water stand that we have out in the corner. We weren't able to do it last year, and I had so many people come up to me and say, oh, is there no, is there no hot dog stand? Oh, that's, we look forward to that. That's our lunch every year, you know. We'd love to be able to have that this year, but we got to staff it, and it takes about 10 to 15 people to staff that. Um, if you'd be interested in helping with, you know, cooking hot dogs, serving hot dogs, serving chips, you know, taking money, running the, running the cash register, that kind of thing, we'd love to, if you consider that. And we'll have sign-up sheets coming up here in the next couple of weeks, but I wanted to get that out there get the bug in your ear for that as well. So a lot of save the mindset space announcements here. So a lot of ways we can help out and be able to bless our community.
か。Not sure if you know who I am, but I'm about to rule the world. Wow! Uh, <laughs> yay! But there's one problem. There's a human has a mustache just like you. <laughs> Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with a hat with the letter of his first name on it? <laughs> Because I don't. <laughs> Bowser is coming. Together, we are going to stop that monster. How? Look at us. We're adorable. Oh, I got this. No problem. <laughs> yes. Come on, Mario. Our big adventure begins now. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! <laughs> There's a huge universe out there Whoa. with a lot of galaxies. Ah! They're all counting on us. Mario! No pressure. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Dan here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend so far. This morning, we're continuing our series called "How Love Works: The Key to Fulfilling Relationships," and we've been talking about the idea that God's love,、um, and that's the number one thing that we should be known for, is love. Not our political opinions, not our any opinions at all, not standing up for what we believe in, whatever that means, you know, and not.、Uh, Um, whatever our pet theology happens to be, whatever. But we should be known for how well we love one another. And so, how do we do that? We've been talking about, you know, the fact that many of us have ways that we feel loved, and ways that we receive love, and we all kind of give and receive love in different ways. It's almost as if there's like different languages to love or love languages. And so, we're talking about what's known as the five love languages. And we've been talking about those things. We've talked about、uh, words of affirmation. We've talked about giving gifts. We've talked about quality time. Now today we're going to talk about、uh, kind of the fourth, the fourth thing in this series on how、uh, how some people speak the language of love, how they give love, and, and maybe how some people receive love. And it's this little thing called acts of service. And that might sound intimidating, but what that means will be more apparent and more hopefully life giving than what you might think it means. As、uh, as as you listen to the message, so I pray that it's helpful, and I hope that you have a fantastic week and enjoy the gorgeous weather. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We will see you soon. Grace and peace, y'all. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for all of us being here together. Lord, I ask that you would fill us with your Spirit, help us to know that you're with us, and feel it. I pray that my words wouldn't be my own, but that they'd be from you, and we'd all have ears to hear, and eyes to see. And hearts that understand what your spirit is saying to us today. Help us to be like you. In your name, Amen, Amen, Amen.、Um, well, everyone here in the room has、um, has contributed and served、uh, in some capacity in our church, even if it's just attending. Even if this is your first time attending. You're part. Of, you're, you're. You're. You've been here. You're part of it. Every one. Every one of us here, and、um, you've served our church in a way, and our community in a way, and God in a way. And、um, as as to to follow appreciating all of you and just recognizing all of you.、Um, this morning, I want to talk about the love language, acts of service.、Um, so that's what we're going to talk about this morning. And. What is an? What do you mean by active service? Well, active service is a way of expressing love and expressing care through actions and deeds, things that are are helpful 
to, to someone. Um, it's all about showing some, somebody that we love them by doing stuff for them. It's simple. Um, but not the bare minimum. It's, it's doing something that goes above and beyond. It's, it's when something inside of us says, you know, you know, I kind of want to clean my friend's car. <laughs> or I want to make my wife's favorite meal. Or I want to mow the lawn for my mom. Or I want to take my neighbor's trash can to the street for him. Or I want to help my brother move. Or something like that. You know, it's about going the extra mile to make someone's life easier, to make someone's life more comfortable, and to make someone's life a bit more joyful. Acts of service. Doing some sort of act of service. And it sounds like really formal. Acts of service. But think about it on a, on a, on a small, just expressive kind of a way. When we speak this love language, we, it means that we find fulfillment in doing something kind for another person, making a tangible difference in their life, even if it's, if, even if it's just something small that brings a smile to their face. Because it's about an expression of love. So for someone whose primary love language is acts of service, um, it means that actions speak louder than words, um, or other gestures of affection, you know, uh, basically acts of tangible expressions of love make them feel most love, make them feel most loved. When someone goes out of their way to do something for them, they feel the most loved. And when they love, maybe, maybe if, the, if it's, that's if someone's receiving love language is, is acts of service. But if someone's giving love language is acts of service, they go out of their way to show their love for them by doing something for someone else going out of their way to support someone else practically. Then act of service is like a tangible, a tangible uh, gift of love. You can think of it that way. Um, so acts of service is, a, is kind of a, it's a way that we show others we love him, but it's very personalized. And um, in their inner scriptures, um, in Galatians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul he says this, he says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh, or basically the flesh is a, is a metaphor in scripture for like our selfish nature. Don't use your freedom to indulge in your selfish nature. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law of God is fulfilled in keeping this one command, everybody say it with me, love your neighbor as yourself. So according to this, the Apostle Paul says, serving one another is an expression of love. And so there's so many, there's, there's tons of examples of scripture, but what does this mean then? What, is it, how does this, what does this look like to serve one another? Um, what, is it, what does it do for us? You know, because it's, it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're, your love language is acts of service, getting people to do stuff for you. Yeah, that sounds good. But that's not what I'm talking about. Because when, when, you're, when you love somebody through an act of service, it's doing a couple things. And the first thing is, one, one possible thing it can do is alleviate the stress of someone in a small way or in a big way. I think about this in like, you know, and I'm talking about in all relationships, but specifically, in, in, and I think about this in my marriage, how this looks, you know, there's been so many times where if, if Beth or I notice the other one being really stressed or about to lose it, particularly with our kids, you know, um, usually we'll automatically take note and um, whatever's on their plate at the moment, we'll stop and we'll take it off their plate and we'll put it on ours. For instance, there's so many times when I've been up half the night working on something for, for grad school or for work or for church or, you know, and, um, and she would notice that. She'd realize somehow she'd get up to go to the bathroom or something and realize I was still awake working on something. And um, then the next morning I would wake up much later than what I set my alarm for. And sometimes she'll get up and she'll turn off my alarm on my phone and take the kids to school because we, we, our kids go to different schools and at different times and we usually split you know, share the responsibility of taking them to school and everything. Um, so she'll turn off my alarm, let me sleep, and bring all the kids to school. Um, that's one, one act of service she's done for me. Or sometimes I've noticed when she was on the end of her rope, you know, 
you know, the kids are, the kids are going crazy. I get home from work. And, and so I'm noticed that she's, you can usually notice when a significant other is, is, is about to snap, you know? <laughs> um, so I'll be like, I'll, I'll stop her and I'll have her, you know, go, go ahead. You go have some you time, go, go for a walk, go take a drive, go whatever you want to do, you know, go upstairs, be, have some alone time, whatever you want to do. And I'll handle the kids' bedtimes or something for the night or whatever. Um, it's one thing I've done for, or the other day I had a few days on where my schedule was, was wall to wall nonstop. And, um, I had, you know, things going on from, from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, a couple days straight. And I remember before heading in, heading in, uh, to my first thing one day, I was eating breakfast quick and, and she was, uh, she was on her way out the door and she said, Hey, just so you know, I'll pick up all the kids from school today. And, um, I was like, really? <laughs> It just blessed the socks off me because it took something off my plate and gave me a little extra time to finish what I needed to finish. It alleviated a bit of stress. And so in our relationship, we do that for each other, you know? So if, you're think, you, know, if you have somebody whose, whose love language is, is an act of service, you think about that. You, you just kind of notice, okay, what's, what's an area in their life? Just kind of, are they, are they getting stressed about something? Where's, where, how can I make their life a little easier in one small way for something today or whatever, you know? Um, so it can alleviate stress. But another thing it can do by doing acts of service is it can give us or someone else fulfillment. It can give us fulfillment. There's an old Chinese saying that says this. It says, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. I'm not a fan of fishing. This wasn't written for me. But if you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Help somebody. All throughout history, some of the greatest thinkers have echoed that idea that happiness is found in serving others, in helping others. Um, all throughout history, listen to what a couple of them had to say. St. Francis of Assisi said this, it is in giving that we receive. The author Leo Tolstoy said this, the sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. Winston Churchill said this, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Nobel Peace Prize recipient Muhammad Yunus said this, making money is a happiness. Making other people happy is a super happiness. And then actress Goldie Hawn said this, giving back is as good for you as it is for those you're helping because it gives you purpose. It gives you purpose. When we give, there's something that happens in us too. When we give, because we, when we give out of love for someone else, it does something in us too. It creates like this cycle of good vibes, this cycle of joy. But is it true? Yes, that's absolutely true. Matter of fact, there's so many different scientific research studies on this subject. There's one example that, that uh, has researchers uh, monitored, researchers monitored the brains of, of people um, through technology of fMRI uh, uh, scans and technology in the brain. And they found that doing things for someone else that helps them, um, as well as giving to them in some way, it in our brain, it absolutely lights up the pleasure centers. It lights up the pleasure centers of the brain. Doing things for others triggers the release of neurotransmitters in our brains, like dopamine and oxytocin, you know, things that people will take drugs to try and get, get those juices going from their brains. You can get that same hit from serving others. This can lead to overall increased feelings of happiness, of contentment, of overall well-being. Did you know that, uh, for those of you that, are, that have been through recovery programs, know this. But if you go to, if, if you struggle with an addiction and you go through AA or, or other similar programs, one of the steps and the final step, you, can't, you cannot complete your recovery process or have any success, lasting success in your recovery process if you do not get this step straight is that if you want long-term health in your recovery, you have to serve others with what you've been given. 
You have to help others in their journey. You've, you're going through recovery journey. If you want lasting recovery, you got to help others in their recovery journey. My, uh, my sister passed away of breast cancer in 2008. And um, she, when she was diagnosed, um, it, was, it was pretty aggressive. But she managed to live 12 years with a very aggressive breast cancer that, that had spread to her whole body. She lived 12 years. And I remember at the end of her life, she said that she lasted so long because she was a mentor to so many other breast cancer women that, that were that struggled with breast cancer that had been diagnosed with it and were going through it. She, she, so many people, she outlived so many people. She'd been to so many funerals of, of, of ladies and, and girls that she had mentored. She helped others. She served others. This is like, like macro, macro 30,000 level foot truths. Helping others is just as much, much a benefit to the giver as it is to the recipient. Doing, doing, serving other people can, can trigger these releases of, of, oxytocin and dopamine and these, these happy chemicals in our brain, just the same as drugs can. God gave us an ordained drug serving one another. And it's all throughout Scripture. I mean, think about the Last Supper. The very last thing Jesus does is He gets down on His knees, He whips out a, a, a towel and washes the, the dirt and the nastiness off of his followers' feet. What God does that? No, gods don't do that. God demands you serve them. But not our God. Our God gets down and serves us. And in the story, Peter's like, I'm not allowing you to wash my feet. I should be washing yours. And Jesus says, you got no part in my kingdom if you don't let me serve you. And Jesus is like, all right. Or Peter says, okay, fine. And when it's all over, Jesus says, now you go and do the same. See, following Jesus is all about learning to love others through serving one another. And if serving isn't your love language, this might be difficult, but it's mandatory. And here's the thing. God knows that it's tough. If this isn't an easy thing for you, God knows it's difficult. So he puts this, this mechanism, hardwires us to get addicted to serving. The only good drug in the cosmos. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 28, Jesus, Jesus is encountering um, his disciples and uh, there's, they're just particularly their disciples, there's a... Uh, one of their mothers is basically coming to him and saying, which one of my sons can sit at, grant that one of my sons be able to sit at your right and left hand in your kingdom, you know, which is a place of honor. And Jesus is basically saying, you, you don't know what you're asking. You know, honor isn't given based on status in, in, in the kingdom. And this is his response. Jesus called everyone together and said, listen, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles, or in essence, the rulers of anywhere in the world that isn't Jewish, um, lord it over them, lord their authority over their subjects, and their high officials exercise authority over them. But he says this, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your, say it with me, servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. That's a metaphorical term there. It's not, not insinuating we become slaves, literally. And he says, the Son of Man, talking about himself, Jesus says, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, we got this Jesus thing all wrong. We think we got to serve Jesus. Jesus says, no, I serve you and you serve each other. Jesus says, you want to serve me? You don't serve me by coming to church and singing to me and doing this stuff. You serve me by loving one another through acts of service. Because acts of service is the kind of love you can see. You can't see my ooey gooey feelings. 
You can't see my goodwill towards you. You can't see my choice to love you when I'm having a bad day. You can't see any of this stuff. What you can see is the tangible things I do. Service in the kingdom of God is how we express. It's the, it's the thing that undergirds all the other love language. It holds them all together, the love languages. And there's so many things I could say. There's so many, there's so many other, other ways we can go about this. But um, the only thing I'll say about this is that what, what acts of service is not. Acts of service is not doing something out of criticism or demand. If you find yourself frustrated that a friend or partner or significant other or a parent won't do something practical for you, you might find yourself nagging them or hounding them. That's not acts of service because love is a choice and it can't be coerced. It can't be, it can't be motivated by fear. This is why so much of Christianity isn't effective because they're not serving people out of love. They're serving people because they're afraid of what God will do to them if they don't. They're afraid of going going to this, this mythical place called hell or, going, or God getting angry and not blessing their life or giving them sickness or whatever. All of those things are myths. There's not, those things are not in Scripture. In Scripture, we see a Jesus that reveals a God who loves us and serves us and says we can go in turn love and serve one another. But see, if, if in any relationship where we, we, start to, we start to criticize and make demands of the other person, I'm going to step on toes. I'm, please, no shame here. I'm not giving you any shame. Any, any, critis, any, any relationship where we start to criticize and make demands of the other person, you may get what you want. But I promise you, you're going to be driving a wedge one, request, or one demand at a time into that relationship. And that person might comply. But deep down inside, they will slowly disconnect from you emotionally. More and more and more. Out of fear. We can't... Doing acts of servants for some, for, out, of, out of fear that someone will be taken advantage of, that's not, that's not acts of service. Acts of service can only be done at the will of the person doing the service. It can't be demanded. Because if it's demanded and the other person does the service, it's not love, it's an obligation or something worse. It can be obligatory, begrudging, guilt-motivated, manipulation, domestic slavery. None of those are acts of service. All of those things turn somebody into an object. It dehumanizes and makes another human a doormat. That's the opposite of love. We're creatures of emotion. We're creatures of thoughts. We're creatures of desires. And we have the ability to make decisions and take action. We decide when we offer our love as an act of service. It can't be demanded from us. We, only we can make that decision. Allowing ourselves to be used or manipulated by another is not love. It's actually um, the, uh, the, the author of the book, The Five Love Languages, he actually says this. He goes, um, when you allow yourself to be coerced into doing something, this is an act of treason against the humanity of both of you. And he says this, he said, because you're allowing him or her to develop inhumane habits of abuse and manipulation. Love says, I love you too much to let you treat me this way because it's not good for you and it's not good for me. In order for an act of service to be that, to be an act of service, it's got to be motivated by a loving choice alone. Just because, with no other ulterior motives. Now, if you're a parent in the room, you're inevitably thinking, what about kids? You're saying that demanding them to do chores isn't love? No, I'm not saying that actually, because that's something completely different. What I'm talking about isn't uh, building habits and routines and life skills into our kids and teaching them how to be functional humans and adults in the world and how to contribute to a group and a family. I'm talking about a willful expression of love, very different. An act of service that shows someone we love them that is not required. Our kids need obligations, they need chores. It would be unhealthy not to have that and they will resist those chores and obligations and they need consequences if they choose to resist those chores and obligations. But 
That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is if, if a child has a love language that's an act of service, it wouldn't have anything to do with what's expected of them. It might look like, mom, I made your bed for you. And no, no obligation to do so. No request to do so. Or dad, I vacuumed your car for you. Or, you know, something, some willful act of love that they came up with on their own for no other reason or motive <laughs> or mo no other motive than just because. So there's, there's so much we could talk about that. We've kind of run out of time here, but um, if you want to love someone who's got an act of service, what you got to do is simply just notice. Notice their life. What's stressing them out? What might bless them if I take that thing off their plate? Oh, that's the thing then. There it is. That's how you discover an act of service. Or you can figure out a way to use what you have to meet whatever need or want that they might have. And sometimes you just got to ask someone. Sometimes you just got to ask. Um, and I'll close with this story. Um, your, your objective is to... Uh, to, to uh, enhance someone's life with an expression of love. Um, you don't want to do something that the person's going to interpret negatively. Uh, when I was in Bible college like 20 years ago or so, uh, my roommate's parents came to visit one time, and they stayed in our apartment, which we were happy to do. But one afternoon, I came home from campus, and I, was, I had to get somewhere, and uh, I took a shower, and I was in a hurry, uh, and before I got in the shower, I didn't realize that my towel wasn't there. <laughs> it wasn't hanging on the hook. Um, my roommate's mother, who was, had been there all day, was trying to do something kind and had went around, grabbed all of our dirty laundry, and washed them. Um, it was a kindly motivated gesture, but it made me really angry. Like, really, really angry. And to be honest, I felt kind of violated. Because instead of doing something that brought joy or made my life easier, it slowed me down. It caused me to have to get out of the shower soaking wet. And I had to go find a scavenge for a towel in my room in my closet. With The room was a private bathroom in my room when the door was closed. So I wasn't like walking around in front of anybody. Um, so I had, but then I had to go find a towel, dry off. Then I had to dry off the bathroom floor, which was soaking wet because I didn't have a towel when I got out of it. And on top of that, I was in a hurry. So it was in a hurry. So it slowed me down. Plus, it's kind of creepy having your roommate's mom slinging a stranger's laundry without you knowing about it. <laughs> you know, it's a little creepy. So there's a measure of common sense that's required if you're going to do something, an act of servants for, for someone, you know. If she'd have put a clean towel back on the hook when she took the other one off, it wouldn't have been as big as the inconvenience. I might have been like, you washed our laundry? Thank you. Still weird, but thank you, you know. Um... So it's, sometimes you just got to ask. You just got to ask. This looks different for every person. It looks different for every season. But listen, it's what happens on the emotional level is, what's, is what matters here. And so it's all about loving somebody through acts of service. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and close with that. Let's pray. God, we thank you for loving us and serving us. We thank you for giving us this charge to love one another. You didn't tell us how. You didn't demand us to, to come up with a specific, or you didn't demand us specific ways. You just told us, learn how to love one another. And so God, help us to do that from our hearts, not out of obligation. Help us to learn to speak one another's love language, specifically through acts of service. Help us to learn what would bless someone else. Help us to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to be manipulated, but do it of our own will to make sacrifices to serve those that we love. For no other reason, not to get anything from them, not to manipulate, but just so that they know that they're valuable to us and that they're worth something. Help us to do this. Help us to notice and find those ways this week. In your name, amen and amen.
We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Belgrade Online. If it was life-giving and encouraging to you, please let us know by visiting our giving page at baumc.org give. Thanks again for watching and have a blessed week.